Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, this is my Fedora Plasma setup, and uh, my deepest apologies that I said I was going to record the video showing you how to set this up, but the reason that did not happen is because Fedora is a royal pain in the petunias, and the number of times I had to reboot, fight with things, research, would have made for a horrible video experience. So I'm just going to kind of share with you some of the highlights and some of the things that what I'm doing. Supposing that you would like to um, put yourself shoot through the sheer torture of doing this. <laughs> but anyway, no, it's not all negative. I'm, I'm just being pessimistic. But um, overall, I have the system working a little bit nicer. Um, a few of the major system differences um, you will actually notice that I'm running Waterfox down here instead of Chromium. There were two reasons for this. Um, one of those seems to be on Fedora. Several web browsers could not play the majority of YouTube videos that I wanted to play. I found that Firefox does play those, but I use Firefox for something completely different on this particular uh, talk, on this particular computer setup. And so it uh, would have taken me way too much overhead to transverse the browsers. The second thing is that Chromium is getting so bad, I was fighting with it to prevent it from trying to put my information into Chromium. And to the point where I'd tell it, don't do this. I'd go into the settings in Chromium. I'd say, do not turn this off because by default, if you are even on the open source Chromium browser now and you log into a Google account, it automatically logs your Chromium browser into Google, um, which is sheer stupidity and probably enough that I will probably just be dumping Chromium altogether. Um, so what I did is I ran Waterfox as the replacement because I tried, uh, this system itself has a few different web browsers installed by default. So we have Conqueror, we have Falcon pre-installed. Uh, of course, I installed, uh, I think Firefox might have been installed here as well. So you had three, three web browsers by default. Neither Conqueror, Falcon, nor Chromium are actually able to play some of the YouTube videos that I wanted to watch. And so I found that Firefox always did. So I said, well, what if I just go back and do Waterfox? Now I did the poor man's install of Waterfox rather than actually putting it into the system and all that, uh, mostly because I just don't want to drop in a terminal, jump everything in here for a temporary computer. So literally I'm running Waterfox simply by dropping it in my home folder. This is the Waterfox. And then I'm just calling the desktop application here. So if I search for search for it in my menu here, you'll find Waterfox. Eh, it's there. I'm not sure why it's there, but it's um, it's actually not. Well, it's because it's a download. But you'll find that if I go into the internet, you'll find that Waterfox is not in here. I don't care um, because I have it linked down here and I have it right on my home folder. I can actually open it. Like I said, poor man's way of installing it because this is a temporary computer and I probably will not last on Fedora very long. There's too many issues. Um, secondly, and this seems to be a, this is a either a KDE or a Fedora thing. I'm not sure which. Uh, I've had this issue on other KDEs, but this also seems to reek of a Fedora issue. I have to fight to get network shares. So I can come over here and then I have to double click here. I have to wait for it to error out and then I can come in here and now enter manually enter my uh, my folders. Now I could uh, probably create an fstab file to mount the folders by default. Um, again, temporary computer that's not going to be lasting very long so I'm not doing that. I do do that functionality on my Linux Mint uh, KDE, which is actually installed on the hard drive on this computer. But since this is my external drive uh, and this system is a temporary rolling testing different distros, I have not done that. That also wreaked some havoc with Kodi, which Kodi, by the way, um, no longer supports several of the old themes. There's only five available themes to download. I don't know what they're thinking. Now, of note, they are actually running on this thing a release candidate for Cody, not an actual full on design. Now I did find a theme that I really liked, so that's okay. Got me a chance to get away from the old Confluence theme and um, experiment with another theme. Now I use Confluence on most of my desktops here. I use uh, one, I think it's called Transparency on my main Cody build, which is actually connected to my television downstairs. So. Uh, those are some of the differences I had to do. Of course, there were a few applications I need to install via RPM packages, such as Skype, 
which it was very good. You can go directly to, to Skype's website, download the RPM, and it installs. However, there is a problem with Discover that Discover will not allow me to install RPM packages. <laughs> so you can see why I didn't record this video. I had to fight with these for a while to figure it out. Well, there is a secondary application called DNF Dragora, which enables you. This is sort of like a synaptic, which I'm not going to load up because it is slow as molasses. It makes me want to go bang my head on something very hard. And this one enabled me to, uh, to actually install the RPMs uh, rather than uh, discover which would not. The other thing this Fedora build does not have that the traditional GNOME version does is the easy ability to add RPM Fusion. So with that, I had to go onto the website and I just had to do myself a little internet search for um, RPM Fusion, Fedora KDE, uh, KDE, not JDE. And then I found the configuration files over here and just like the good old days I had to come on down and I had to copy this guy into my uh, terminal and then once that was into the terminal then I could in theory go and install things except discover despite RPM Fusion being listed in the system still is not letting me to install things from there so you can see down here under our settings that RPM Fusion is enabled, but if I go and look up something that was an RPM, it wouldn't show up at all anywhere. So I basically had to completely not use that at all and use our NF Degora to install anything on the system. So we are already, uh, ultimately I'll say if you wanna run Fedora, run GNOME, it, run GNOME. They've made that one very easy. But since this is a spin, probably more of an afterthought, uh, all of that roundness is not placed into the system. As far as the setup itself, um, I went with this. Uh, it's not full material, but it's it's sort of material-ish with these nice grayscale themes. Um, I did actually have to edit the Waterfox logo and the Cody logo. Those stuck out like a sore thumb. There were no... Uh, um, no logos for it. What I actually did, I should have done it on the Cody one as well. Um, what I did on the Waterfox one is I just simply opened up the existing one and I grayscaled it. And then I just called this to use a different browser, a uh, logo rather. And so I edited the logos for Cody and for Waterfox so that those match my main theme. But of course, if I'm loading it up or if I'm searching for something in here, all of not everything logs in there correctly. Uh, I was able to get connected to my NAS and move everything over so everything does work, including Firefox. Um, this was an issue with uh, Linux Mint Debian Edition that it was using Firefox ESR and the profile is not completely compatible. So I was actually not able to add my, um, I was not able to add my, uh, my things like um, uh, new, uh, what am I trying to say here? I was not able to add new bookmarks to the system before and so I was able to, to fix that so everything here works and we are running the uh, which version I think it's uh, Firefox 63 so I'll probably be expecting 64 to come down the pipeline here pretty soon uh, Chromium version was either 70 or 71 enough to be highly annoying so Chromium is still installed but I'm not using it anymore swapping that out instead for Waterfox as I said as far as my theming is concerned, I did switch my icons to use double clicking simply because I'm most used to that. Um, so that is set up in my theming systems and for those wanting to know what themes and icons I'm using. As far as my workspace theme, I'm using Breeze. Uh, cursor theme, I'm using Breeze. Colors, Breeze Dark. <clears throat> Uh, let's see, icons, I'm using Clarity as the name of the icons. Now I actually installed about two dozen icon packs to get anything that actually showed up. I was just looking for something simple, um, Papyrus, something like that. And I went with the Clarity ones because they were the first ones out of a ton of them that I actually installed. So if I come over here and, uh, and click on this guy here, then you will, let's see. So a lot of these just say install. I mean, I literally get through and installed these. I got either errors out or things were saying they were installed. Nothing was ever showing up. So it was kind of a pain to get everything in here. 
Uh, I don't think I adjusted anything there. Of course, the only other things that I did is I swapped the titles so I have the titles rather than what type of structure it happens to be. So that's effectively what I did. I just went with a, a simple thing. The weather, uh, the weather icon I usually use that works everywhere else, I could not get it formatted right. It would either give me just this massive bunch of blank space or I couldn't make it smaller. I just could not get this thing to work. So I downloaded this alternative weather one. I don't like it nearly as well as I liked the other one I had, but it's functional and it works. I put my less used programs up here in a quick launch bar, my most used programs down here as a quick launch bar right on the panel, which is exactly the functionality that I like. And I put my home folder over here. So I, if I need to do something more advanced, I can just kind of click right here to get into Dolphin. If I need to go directly, maybe I download something, I can just kind of come over here and double click here and it'll open up directly to the downloads. So that works. You can see that's where I downloaded my water lungs from. In fact, let's just go ahead and delete that now. I did put the trash icon on here. Um, since I had the folder icons here and up here and Dolphin right here, I just made the decision not to put the other home icons on the desktop. And I just still absolutely love this picture, so no point in changing it. Although I was thinking about putting uh, Adora wearing a big old fedora on my desktop, but I decided against it. You know, copyright stuff, whatever. Uh, but anyway, this is the build. Um, I can probably say on initial thought, this will probably not last very long. Just the number of little tiny bugs that I've encountered. Um, I was trying to test out Banshee. Banshee crashes left and right. Like I said, Chromium and nearly every other web browser that comes pre-installed on this is not able to play most YouTube videos. Uh, Evolution Thunderbird seem to be working just fine as far as um, uh, Firefox working the way I need it to. That also works. And... And, uh, I did actually have an issue early on with GIMP, but it seems to have resolved itself. And uh, that is actually when I was going to create these logos. Um, it was actually not allowing me to select a color. Last time I tried this out, it did seem to work. Uh, let's go ahead and do a quick test of it now. So basically what I wanted to do is select some of the colors um, for putting it inside of an icon. And uh, anytime I'd come over here and use my color select tool, it would just give me something that was blue instead of something that was correctly the color. Like for example, that one, this is, it's kind of doing it again. So over here, I mean, I'm clearly on something white and it's highlighting some green color. What? Come up here to grab white. It's still highlighting a green color. So I don't know what it's doing, but it's just highlighting green colors. <laughs> I'm not sure why it's, everything's green. Um, so I apparently can't select anything other than this weird green color. And so I'm not sure what's ha causing that. Um, maybe it's because I'm recording a video. I don't think I was trying to record the video at that point in time, but... Uh, so yeah, every now and again, this guy is not working for me. So I'm finding little bugs inside little applications that makes me wonder why people run Fedora, but I guess people like it. Um, uh, I'm not ripping on it too bad. It's actually, it's not too shabby. Uh, we are going to give it a test. I did actually run into uh, a very similar issue with, the, with Cody as I've encountered on Debian. Uh, and that was kind of what our test was, is to determine, is is this a Cody and Debian issue, or is this a Cody and Plasma issue? And it seems to be a Cody and Plasma issue. I'll know more after I use this for about a week. Um, I am not anticipating I'm going to be running this for very long, because it's just, it's causing some issues already. Um, it's too early to tell if I'm getting the regular media stumble, but I'll actually put together a little checklist of, of things to determine is this, uh, you know, how would I rate this distro? Uh, but this is my basic setup. Again, I apologize that I don't get a chance to show you how to set it up. Um, simply because, I mean, there were just so many issues. I still actually do have the video about how you do all of the fine details of setup on my Linux Mint KDE, which was a lot uh, a lot nicer setup anyway, according to me. I mean, this isn't bad. I mean, honestly, this is not bad. I, I kind of like this. I could get used to this, I think, but uh, we'll see how it looks. So um, that's uh, this is my Fedora KDE. I'll run it. I'll commit to running it for at least a week um, and uh, longer if I need to, but uh, that's kind of what I think I'm going to do. So uh, thanks for coming along on this uh, on this video, and let me know what your comments are in the description down below.
I hope you've enjoyed this video from Switched to Linux. If you'd like to help support the channel, check out the links at the top. There is another video over here. You can check out our Patreon page down here. And you can check out shop.switchtolinux.com for information on a t-shirt like this or some other designs. Thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.